Joe, welcome to the Bing Lounge. Thank you. Honored to have you here in Portland. And uh, it's so I, great to be here. Yeah, we got a chance to talk backstage for a few moments, uh, and your day started out kind of crazy. Yeah. And uh, for new, for those that are new here in the Bing Lounge, obviously radio tours happen all the time for up and coming artists all over the place. You had one hell of a crazy day, dude. I had one, probably the single craziest <laughs> day of my career. Yeah, we we woke up this morning at six a.m. in Denver, and uh, we jumped on a plane at eight a.m., landed in Salt Lake City, Utah, and we had a, an eleven a.m. appointment in radio. We had a twelve. And then uh, Chris was kind enough to book us for a 140 flight, which I, I called him. I said, how in the world are we doing a 12 o'clock visit and then, and then a 140 flight? He said, I've done this before. All right, cool. So, <laughs> so we, uh, we, we were lucky enough. We made it to the airport in Salt Lake City. We were supposed to connect in Oakland. And when we made it there, the Southwest lady was like, are you all in the band? I said, yeah, we are. And she's like, you want to go to Portland straight? Heck yes, please, if you could do that. <laughs> And she did. So we got here. We Instead of getting here at 5.30, which is what we were supposed to do, we actually got here at like 2.45. So we had time to stop the hotel first. So we feel refreshed. Yeah, you're ready to go. <laughs> you're ready to go. <laughs> hey, haven't had dinner yet, right? No. Okay, no. so we dinner. Had, we ate peanuts on a plane a that was all day. That was a snack. So there you go. Yeah. So uh, dinner afterwards. And then, of course, the all-time favorite for everybody that stops by the Bing Lounge, they always make their midnight stop at Voodoo Donuts. You guys got to stop by there. Chris. Uh, wait, can you explain that to me? I don't know what that is. It's a landmark here Voodoo in, in Portland. It's called at, Voodoo at Donuts. Midnight? Well, you can go before midnight because we're going to go out to dinner afterwards. But you stop by and you get a choice of uh, some delicious donuts that are basically a Portland tradition. There's only two, uh, three shops now in the country. They just opened one in Colorado. Colorado, too early here in Portland. It's amazing. You've never had it. I got. I guarantee you're gonna love it. A lot of stoners in this town, I guess. Right? Midnight. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you said Colorado. I'm trying to put two and two together. You well, just across the river is Vancouver, Washington, where it's all legal, all right, so it's right, all right, good. Right, right. <laughs> all right. Quick question for you: Ford, Chevy, or Dodge? Chevy. Chevy. Favorite color? Blue. Favorite ice cream flavor? Favorite ice cream flavor: cookies and cream. Oh, dude, a man after my own heart. I love it. Yeah. And I noticed you have a lot of tattoos. I have about 180 hours. I don't know how many tattoos I have. Right. But I, yeah. What's your most prized one? Oh, man. Um, I'm thinking the Bob Marley. No, no. I would have to say. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, there you go. For all of our soldiers out there. Yeah. Yeah, that's, I, that's, that means the most to me. I got a chance to look at your Facebook page today. 123,000 fans. I suggest you all get on and like his page because you're going to be blown away. Most of them really like Oz. Just, <laughs> it's the hair. I'm telling you, brother. It's the hair. <laughs> if I had hair like that, I'd be rocking it too. Yeah. Uh, man, you have got some great music, and I don't want to spoil it for anybody in the room, but uh, I, I did happen to catch the one, Look at You. Very funny. Did you get a chance to pick out all the characters for the video? We, yeah, we had a lot. Of, yes, we did. Every single one of the girls in the video, we knew. The, the, my band was all the guys. Okay. So I called my director up on the video, and I said, hey, man, I don't want to do the same dirt road pickup truck video, you know? Sure. The song's a simple song. It's just about that girl you can't take your eyes off of. But I called him up. I was like, every guy, every guy has a girl, right? Every guy has a specific type of girl. Like, you know, I love... Country girls. I love the Daisy Dukes. and But, I mean, B-Dubs likes, you know, he loves redheads. Everybody has a type. And sure. I called him up and I said, I said, let's do that. Let's let's kind of take this song and let's take a guy that he may be a businessman. He's attracted to the professional woman or whatever. And he called me the next day. He's like, yo, I'm going to take your idea and run with it. I said, cool. That's why you're the director. I'm just a singer. <laughs> and uh, and he ended up doing this whole police lineup thing. And, and so <laughs> the best part about it is... If you haven't seen it yet, but he wears these Richard Simmons gold shorts in this video. <laughs> and it was not planned that way. It was not. It was yeah. planned. Oz was supposed to be like a volleyball player. And oh. like he was going to be the guy that in the video that liked the girl in the bikini. And, right. you know, and which is great, which is fantastic. That's your style. <laughs> and so like three days before the video, my director, Tyler Evans, he calls and he goes, hey, man, I was thinking about something. This whole beach volleyball. It just it's not going to make sense because we're doing a police lineup and you can't have people like not wearing clothes, you know? And I was like, "All right, so what are you thinking? How do you feel about Oz doing like a, a, a like a like a Richard Sim and as soon as he said Richard Simmons, Oz wasn't with me at the time and I go, "Oh, that's perfect." Oh yeah. Yeah. We <laughs> yeah. I think whatever you want to do, you run with that and we'll tell Oz the day of the shoot. Right. So, you want to be a member of the band, this is what you got to do. Exactly. <laughs> well, is there anybody that you Starting out as your new radio tour now, is there anybody that you have not met yet that you are just like can't wait to work with them or write with them? Who would it be? Man, 
man. That transition was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Garth is my is my hero of heroes. Um, when I this last song I just wrote, all the week before CRS. CRS is a country radio seminar in Nashville. It's usually the end of February. So, the week before CRS this year, we were writing with a company called Swap Music Group. Swap Music Group is owned by Johnny Garcia. Johnny Garcia is Garth's band leader and lead guitar player. Okay. So Johnny and I had never met, and we were writing all week, and uh, one of his writers is a, is a dear, dear friend of mine, Jay. And Jay's like, hey, Johnny wants to meet you, man. He's like, we're doing a, a writer's round tonight. Would you come out? So the three of us went out, and Johnny, like, put us on the spot. Come on up and sing. So I met him on stage for the first time, <laughs> and we, we went up, the three of us went up and did a couple songs. And he came up to me, and he goes... You're going to make it, bro. You're going to be a superstar. And I, I literally, like, my mouth got dry. <laughs> Nervous. Right. I'm like, you play with Garth Brooks every night. You just said that to me. <laughs> and uh, so we wrote with him the whole rest of the week. Um, and I, I've been saving this song for four years that I wanted to write with, like, a specific guy. And I won't give it away, but uh, Johnny was like, hey, why don't you and I write together on Friday? And I was like, oh. <laughs> I know exactly what I'm doing. So I won't give the song away, but I'll tell you the story. It's only 30 seconds long. But So Johnny walks in the room. We had met the night before playing. And he walks in the room. I was like, Johnny, he's holding his guitar. I'm like, close your eyes. He closes his eyes. And I was like, all right, you and Garth just sang Friends in Low Places, 100,000 people. The stage goes black. That was the last song before the encore. The whole entire band leaves. The arena's going nuts, but it's pitch black. The lights come back on the stage, and it's just two stools. It's just you and Garth. And his eyes are closed. I'm like, now play something. And he starts finger picking. And I said, the, the name of my title is Because of You, I Am. And the hook is, my whole life I've wanted to be a music man. And because of you, I am. It's my thank you to my fans, to my parents, to God, to everybody. And he got chills like all over the place. And he stood up and he goes, oh, my God. Oh my God. <laughs> and, and so anyway, we wrote it. In 15 minutes, we wrote the song together. Wow. And he says to me when we're done, he says, you care if I play for Garth? <laughs> and I looked right at him. I go, you care if I throw up right here? <laughs> so, so he played it for Garth. And I got a call the next day, and he says, you know Garth's going on tour, right? And I said, yeah, September. And he goes, Garth says, uh, you pick any show you want. You have front stage, front row seats, and you have dinner after the show with Garth. So to answer your question, when I throw up on Garth Brooks, <laughs> I'll send everybody pictures, and you'll know exactly. Yeah, where. yeah, and we'll be sure to catch it on YouTube. Absolutely. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'll ruin my shining moment that I get to be. We'll rock it out while you can, brother. <laughs>